Through 12 games in our first ever Premier League campaign, we currently sit 12th with 15 points. But whether or not this decent run, and I will call it a decent run of form, continues, that remains to be seen. Again, the goal for this season is to stay above the drop zone, solidify, make sure that we don't get immediately relegated, and right now we are indeed on track to do that. I want to get to a couple of your comments, though, of course, before we really get into it. You should really consider potentially signing one or two regens a year. I don't care to sign regens. I'm not going to do it. We made it this far without doing it, and it's going to stay that way. The game definitely screwed you over in terms of scheduling. It it does, it does though. That's what this game does, unfortunately. I'd prefer for you to play less games, maybe like one important game a season. I think a good idea for the next series would be a Continental Youth Academy series. Put it this way. If Youth Academy series continues, which they probably will, it will be like Draft of Glory is on NHL, where we just rework it. It'll be, okay, well, we can only scout from this region or this region as opposed to everywhere. So that's that's pretty much how this will continue to uh, to evolve from here. You can prevent players uh, going on a release clause, just renegotiate the contract. That's true. And why I didn't think of that to save Eklund, I'm not sure. And it was a pretty bad mistake, but... At the very least, it is a learning uh, its a learning experience there. Why are you still scouting? Why would we not be? Why would we not be to keep the talent coming through? That doesn't make sense. Why would we not? Why would we stop scouting? Ever. Doesn't make sense. That said, let's take a look at the schedule ahead. Because it's, uh, it's interesting. You know, our next game against City. Then we got a Europa League matchup. Then we play Watford. Then we play Barnsley in the Carabao Cup. And then it's Burnley and Bayer. It's, it is an insane schedule. And of course, that's not factoring in FA Cup as that really continues to, uh, to pick up. It's going to be tough. For the most part, though, the squad has stayed strong. The second team's performed relatively well. Dragosevich between the sticks for us. I'm confident that this team can continue to perform at the high level that we need them to. That said, this episode is going to be about making as much progress as we can, so I will see you guys whenever I have an update for you. It might be a month from now when our scouting reports are back. Will we still be in 12? Will we still be in 12? Will we be higher on the table? Lower? How will the Europa League shape up for us? Which will honestly probably be where our first update is after that game against Bayer Leverkusen. We'll find out. I don't believe it was their best squad, seeing as guys like Kevin De Bruyne, Adarison, Gabriel Jesus were on the bench. But we picked up a point against Manchester City. They still had a very capable squad. Alexandro in at left back, Isco, Raheem Sterling, Leroy Sané. And we picked up a point. I don't know what's going on with this team and why we just seem to rise to the occasion against these big clubs, but it's a very promising uh, trait for our club to have at this point. We pick up a huge victory in the league against Watford, but it was not without consequence. Timu Altonen is going to be out for four months with an ACL injury, and that drastically changes the look of the team. To recap what has happened again, we draw against City. We draw in the Europa League against Rosenberg, which is going to make that last game, the sixth game of the group stage against Bayer Leverkusen, very, very important. We do get the 2 1 win against Watford, but again, we have now lost Altonen for a decent amount of time. So to get a look at what this team is going to be. Uh, moving into the first team full-time is going to be Cordoba. And more than likely, I think that means Ross is going to be on the bench because Bailey's now going to be in that second team full-time. So that is what this roster is looking like at this point. So Cordoba is going to be getting a massive opportunity. He's not a massive step down from what Altonen is at the very least. He's actually a year younger so we'll see how that works out for us. We do have a Carabao Cup match here against Barnsley. And this is going to be uh, interesting, I'll say. As again, Cordoba is going to be out of the team. Bailey will step in full time. And I still think we'll roll with Ross on the bench there. So Bailey now goes from being a full time bench option 
towards being in the starting second team, it's another huge opportunity for him as well. As a matter of fact, here with the second team, we have to make that change as Richardson had a red card. He missed that game against Rosenberg. Not sure if that, or Rosenborg, I should say. I believe that is. But I'm not sure how much of an impact that had on the team. But regardless, quarterfinal matchup in the Carabao Cup. We'll go ahead and sim this. Let me just double check. Yeah, I put Ross on the bench, didn't I? Good. Good. So we'll be running the second team here in this game. Let's see what we can do. Hopefully we can keep our Carabao Cup efforts alive. The further we go into these tournaments with the second team, the better. Because once we're out, they're not going to be getting as much playing time. That's just a fact. So let's sim this. Roberts, though, scores in the 14th minute. It's promising. You know what? Well, let's keep it live. Let's keep it live because of that goal. You see as well United and Chelsea both playing games today. Can we get that extra insurance goal? Not that I don't trust Dragasevich, but a win here would be nice. Montandon gets it. They also pick up a red card. They do get a goal back in the 84th minute, but that is a 2-1 victory. We defeat Barnsley. And things are looking okay. By the way, in the league, we've moved up to 11th. So we have that going for us in terms of training here as well. Let's see. Who do we have that's close to going up? Luna, unfortunately. I've been checking his stats. He's not quite there. None of our center backs are close. Wilson, for the record as well, has lost the promising tag. But, again, a 77 overall center, uh, center back that is in the Prem is not a terrible option. He's not exactly Virgil van Dyke-esque, but still, he's good enough to get the job done. We also have Dragasevich up to a 79. So things are still looking good there. Uh, let's go to Arne. How close are you to going up in any possible way? And unfortunately, the answer is no. So that's been the main way that we've been focusing on training, is looking at those who have been close to you know going up in attributes and putting the time in. But with Luna, he'll be the one exception. As Villalaba, Sanchez, Ross, and Lund all go up by a point. That is, uh, that is the ideal training week, I would say. I think we can view that as a positive. We do have a game coming up at the start of the month against Burnley. They are in 13th. We are in 11th. Three points between us. So this is a pretty damn big game. We'll stay live for it because our scouting reports are going to be coming back. Now, with Dragasevich being like, I want out, it's ridiculous, and I ignore it. If they end up leaving, cool. You can't really put too much stock into that. I've had two seasons now of Roberts being like, oh, I want out, sell me, and he's still here. Dragasevich, for the record, has played 10 games. Clark's played 17. So it's not as if Dragasevich isn't playing at all, right? I mean, come on. He's our Europa League keeper. He's had three matches in the Carabao Cup. He can complain all he wants to. If he ends up leaving... I'm not that upset. I mean, you look at the talent that we have in goal that's on loan. He can go if he wants to. And that's why we're continuing to scout. Because if these players aren't happy with being on the second team and they leave, we have the options to immediately replace them. Let's sim this game against Burnley. They are in pretty good form. Picking up a win against Spurs. Excuse me. Picking up a win against Spurs in their last match. Cordoba is in the first team due to the alternate injury. They have some decent options, and they score five minutes in. I'm going to sim this, and it's a 2-0 win for Burnley. And Anderson picks up an injury as well. How big of a knock is this going to be? Is the injury bug proving to be a little bit of a problem? Seven weeks for Ovi Anderson. Brutal, brutal injury luck for us right now. That is not obviously what we were hoping for and that is going to change up what this first team looks like Roberts is now going to be that option on that left hand side rather than him being in the second team which means somebody either like you and Morgan I'm actually not sure what this team's going to shape up to be now at this point uh, talking to the second team at least because we have Roberts there Sanchez is in I guess it's going to have to be Guzman who ends up coming in. Uh, let's see. Three-star weak foot and a three-star weak foot. Let's just put in Guzman on the right-hand side. And despite the fact that he's no longer a promising player, which is why I haven't been training him, uh, Ewan Morgan, I actually think is going to be in. I mean, Guzman, I'm not against playing a lefty on the right-hand side. I think Morgan's at least going to be in on the bench. 
Bailey, again, right now is the one guy. Uh, if there's you know a red card or an injury, he'll step up and he'll be on the bench uh, in the meantime. But aside from that, we're looking we're looking good. So Morgan works his way back onto the bench. Guzman will now be on the second team with Sanchez. So these injuries testing our depth. That is for sure. As again, Guzman normally on the bench. He'll be taking that step up. You know what? Because he's because he's on the bench, he actually I'm gonna take him off. Uh, with him being on the second team, I'm going to take him off the bench. That way, we are guaranteed to have our second team unit be at 100% fitness, or at least as close to it as they can be, as opposed to potentially playing a game. So, the bench is the same for both squads. No second team players are on the first team sheets bench, is the current setup at the moment. And now, we have, and that second team is going to have an immediate challenge as we have a, a big time matchup against Bayer Leverkusen coming up, the final game of the group stage here in the Europa League, and we are desperate for a victory after that draw. As I think, you know what, let's focus. I don't want to focus on the youth squad right now because I don't know who's staying. I'm going to wait to clean that up a little bit. Uh, of course, once we get a look at our scouting report. So I'll put a little bit of work into Cordoba which is just a good idea in general with, how, with him now being on the first team. We'll improve that attack position a little bit as well. Just a cheap way to uh, try and boost up that overall. Not a cheap way to boost it up, but you get what I mean. Uh, let's see, Toby Kelly, I'm surprised, is still a promising player. 99 ball control, 91 dribbling, by the way, for Toby Kelly. There are some players where, again, obviously, especially with you look at like right backs and center backs, haven't been playing guys exactly where they're supposed to be. Toby Kelly is such an interesting case, though, for just I mean, that ridiculous level of ball control. If we have a cam, he is uh, certainly the go-to option. So our scouting reports will be back before this game. We'll take a look and then play. I mean, we are actually safe. Never mind. We're good. So the Polish club Lubin lost their last game. Uh, we were only three points clear. Now we're four points clear, so they lost. We're good. That draw against Rosenberg decided it. So we already know the seeding. Leverkusen, they are going to finish top of the group. All we can do is stop them from going on a perfect 6-0 run, but they will be the top team out of this group. We'll be the second team, but we are advancing in the Europa League, which is a huge accomplishment for this squad. Especially for that second team, and especially lately because of the injuries, uh, Alish Rebar, Rybar Rebar, will be signed. Drahoslav Jahoda will be signed. Anybody else? No. So we'll hold off there with Slovakia, of course, accidentally the second time that we're checking them out. Morris in Austria. Do we have anybody? Boy, do we. Walter Jungbauer. Sign him up. And Walter Pichler. Not that we need another goalkeeper, but we'll look to sign him up. Uh, Bram or Bram Van Leeuwen is going to be on the way out, as is Jakob Hornick. So, a couple of players leaving the squad rather quickly. We'll sign Pischler. Is there anybody else? Gabriel Lenner will sign him up. And another, of course, it's Austria, so it's got to be Valters everywhere. Uh, 81 to 94, though, for a keeper. I mean, just ridiculous. Uh, unfortunately, Doru Pavalescu is the obvious out. He's a 63 at 15 years old, which is amazing, but that potential is a bit too low. Must you make noise, dog, whenever I record? Must you? Must you, with your damn ear shake. Sounding like you're taking off. Taking flight. Uh, is there anybody else to cut? 16 years old and a 48, great potential, but that's not going to happen. We're going to have a rough time cutting further players from this youth academy. Uh, but Killian Hintermeyer will be signed. Falter Mayer will be signed as well. And we'll see what Kennedy has for us in the Netherlands. Uh, Frank Wieser will be the first option. Oh boy, so here we go. Uh, La Cactus is staying for the moment. Villalaba is obviously staying. Romero is great. Winkler is great. Uh, Zahner also looking great. <laughs> Rebar is a 59 at 15 years old. Is there anybody with like a crazy low overall? There's a chance. I'm going to have to sign somebody here. Hintermeyer is a 49 at 17. Okay, so he's an easy out. 
Leonard's a 54 at 17, as is DeGroff. Well, I think DeGroff can go just for the fact that, I mean, Mayer is the same age, better, more guaranteed potential, and nine overall points better. So that's the easy cut there. So Visa will be signed. Brower will be signed for the moment. No guarantee that he stays, especially with some talent like this. Oh, my God. So let me double-check the guys that we just signed. Yeah, Brower's going to have to go for obvious reasons. Viser 17, eh, he might make it. This is a tough one. This is a tough one. Now, see, I wish this was sorted by goalkeepers. Uh, it's not. We have four in the academy right now. So we have Lacactus, who's 18. I know it's not Lacactus, but, I mean, come on. Uh, Lacatus, uh, 18 years old and a 65. Again, solid potential. 16 years old and a 55. I could probably get Winkler up or Winkler up by 10 points in two years. Uh, 17 and a 63. Not quite the same guarantee. And Mayer is 17 and a 63. But he has a better guarantee of potential than Pichler. So I think Pichler is going to go. He's looking great, but as it is, you you just saw how many keepers we have already that we're trying to sort through. It is ridiculous. Uh, we'll sign Max Van Leeuwen, and uh, I, I, I know I've seen that name. I can't do it, but uh, we'll sign him up as well. So to say we have some elite-level talent in the Youth Academy right now would be an understatement and a half. So again, if we lose guys like Eklund, if we have players who want out because they're not happy with playtime, those are going to be the guys to immediately replace them. So I'm fairly happy about that. Most solid November player of the month. We will go ahead and sim this final game against Leverkusen. Second team is in. Bailey up to a 71 already. Let's see what we can do here. This is more for pride than anything, the home leg against Leverkusen, can we stop them from going a perfect 6-0? and oh? That is the question. Let's sim it. 3-2-1, and we can. All right. So I believe that's Leon Bailey that scored the goal for them. Richardson, our center back, gets one for us. And we do stop them from, I mean, not going undefeated, but they did not go perfect. No 6-0 and oh record, and I'll be intrigued to see what happens in the next leg here. I'm not sure if it's already updated. It depends on whether or not everyone's played their games. But we'll take a look here. We're 11th in the league, and there you go. Case in point, we are through in Group I, but I believe, yeah, it's still not updated, although every team's played six. So I'm going to sim forward a little bit uh, further. I'll talk to you in a moment, but a pretty big set of results there for us. We sim the game against Wolves. It's a one-all draw, and Jay Morgan... Breaks his collarbone. He is out for eight weeks. This injury bug has been devastating. You might see it there on the right. The draw is out. Tranmere Rovers draw Lille of the French League in the next round of the Europa League. So we have our answer. In my opinion, it's what looks like a fairly winnable matchup. Let's actually... Get another look there at the full Europa League draw. But we get out of the group stage, and there you go. On the round of 32, we draw Lille. Compared to some of the names that we could have come up against, Spurs, Benfica, Sporting, uh, fucking Valencia, <laughs> it could have been so much worse. I would fully expect us to make it out of the round of 32. And to give you a look right now at how strong of a team that is, Again, right now, our first team unit is a four-star club with the injuries. If we look at Lille, they are a four-star. Maybe I'm a bit too optimistic. That's a decent team. That's a decent team, but it depends. Are they going to play their first team in those games, or are they going to play a second team? We don't yet know what their depth looks like, but... There you go. Is it as scary in name of a club that it could be? No, but it's still going to be a tough challenge for us. But I think that's a strong accomplishment to get out of the group stage in our first ever attempt at European football with the Europa League. We do have a big game here, a home game against Liverpool. So the first team 
is good to go despite injuries. We've performed very well against top clubs. They are in tremendous form. As you would have seen Mo Salah was last month's Player of the Month. This could be tough. A rematch of the FA Cup. They have some strong names in there. Of course, Salah's still there. And he scores. Uh, they, they have a true like FIFA career mode mix of like, oh, let's just sign guys with top potential. That appears to be the case for what they did. Andy Robertson picks up a red card, though. That might be an opening for us. Is there a late goal to sneak a point away from Liverpool? Ross with the goal off the bench. His first goal for the club. And that's going to get us a point against Liverpool. What a goal. Oh my god. <laughs> of all the people to score that goal, it's Ross off the bench. The 17-year-old Scotsman. The dagger in the heart of Liverpool as they, for some reason, cannot get a win against Tranmere Rovers. If we haven't played them already before this season, and we have to play them again, I'm sure they will. But there you go, 17-year-old Rory Ross gets the job done. It's actually his second goal for the team in three appearances, mind you. I don't recall seeing his first goal, so excuse me for that. But that's his second Premier League appearance. He has two goals already. That high attacking work rate is pretty damn promising. So there you go, Rory Ross. Making an impact for us. That keeps us in 13th in the league. We have another big game here coming up against Manchester United, but a little bit of news before it. It's that Rory Ross has been loaned out. He's going to Genoa. Now, we will have some players coming back into the club from loan once the window opens, so we'll be able to still uh, field a pretty solid roster, at least in terms of having a distinctive first team and second team. But uh, a big-time goal for Rory Ross gives us, uh, you know, a chance to loan him out and let him have some hopeful, uh, eh, some hopeful first-team time, or at the very least, some more consistent playing time. Now, this is a rough game. John Stones is there, Pogba's there, Dembele, Lukaku, Anthony Martial. Another draw here would be great. A win would be outstanding. Deli Alley on the bench, by the way. Can we hold on? Ten minutes left, and Anthony Martial scores in the 83rd. Manchester United walk away with the win. That's going to drop us down, I imagine, a little bit closer to the drop zone than we'd prefer to be. Can't see that at the moment unless we were to double check it, but we do have a, uh, an FA Cup matchup, not a Carabao Cup matchup. Oh, God, another, another Cup match. That's where it went. So we have a Carabao Cup match in just a few short days against Everton. We play Everton three times in two weeks. That is ridiculous. Both Carabao Cup matches because it's so late in the process and a league match. So we have an FA Cup match here against Bradford. I'd like to think we would be able to get the win. That second team is looking solid still. Uh, you'd expect them to be able to compete with teams in those lower tiers still. But about time we had to run this team in the Premier League, we would have a very bad time. So again, I still don't like the, uh, you know, I still don't hate my approach to last season in terms of let the first team play a little bit more in these cup matches. Because that way, you know, we were guaranteed at least a little bit more of an opportunity, I think, for our second team as Guzman. That might be his first goal for the club. I'm going to sim the rest of this. 3-1. Guzman, Montandon, and Rory Ross again. I'm actually kind of concerned about loaning out Rory Ross. He has three appearances, three goals. The kid's amazing. We might recall him back sooner rather than later, or at the very least, imagine what he could potentially be upon his return. Rory Ross, do not forget that name, even though he's scheduled to go out on loan, as Cordoba is up to a 74, which was Altonen's starting overall at the beginning of this season. So the window is about to open. We'll see what moves are made, who potentially comes back, on loan that's going to you know, result in a couple of different changes. We have quite a few emails, so I imagine quite a few players are back. Ross and Guzman, both out on loan, and we actually get nobody back. So this will be interesting to see how this team shapes up at this point. Dragosevic and Arne are both still wanting out. If they do go, uh, we have room to make up for it at the very least. Youth Academy-wise, I can't help but think someone like Vihalaba should be signed nearly immediately. 
He is, without a doubt, our best prospect. And aside from that, we have a couple of goalkeepers. You know what? Since we loaned out, since we loaned out Guzman, I'm going to side Mateo Villalaba. Let's do it. 67 overall at 16 years old. 90 to 94 potential. Let's sign him up. Let's do this. We will promote him to the senior team, and we'll take it from there. So, Villalaba, welcome aboard. Let's get a look at him here. The funny thing is, I'm actually still going to set him to uh, potentially go out on loan. Just so that way I have the the options. But the uh, Paraguay International, at least he will be in due time. We'll hit him up on the loan list. And let's take a look at the attributes here. Oh, that is a beautiful sight. Four star, three star. Not amazing, but not horrible by any stretch. High, low work rates. Mateo Villalaba. There is one thing, though, that we have to do. For Mr. Villalaba, as we will do for every new player, and that is to randomize the appearance, except if they give them red gloves. There you go. I'm going to change the boot, though, for obvious reasons. What, what are we thinking, Mateo? What are we thinking? We got to, we got to, you know, I'm not saying we're going to match the color scheme. You know what? There you go. That works. Again, they need to fix that, so at least if you randomize, it doesn't just go off of, like, the EA default shoes. But there you go. There you go. So we have the semifinal Carabao Cup match against Everton coming up, uh, which is going to be interesting in that the first and second team is looking a little bit shaky in the way that I've had the team set up isn't exactly going to fly, and Dragasevic is 1,000% going to be sold, as is Arne. Uh, seeing these messages, the death knell. So unfortunately, Dragasevic, that FA Cup hero, he is uh, he's going to want out. I don't think there's any way to keep him at this point. What's that other email? Uh, Leo Maliri wants to play. That is unfortunate. This could actually be Dragasevich's final game for us. Again, offering him a new contract isn't going to help because right now I'm pretty sure he's under he's under important, which you would think having 12 appearances out of 34 possible would you know deem you. I mean, you are important. You are the man who's leading us through the Europa League. Apparently, that's not enough for him. So, whether or not we sign someone or recall Reynaldo Graniero, time will tell. Graniero hasn't uh, played all that much. Apparently, the 19-year-old Chilean may be getting the opportunity next. So, we'll see what happens. Again, I don't think that uh, a new contract will help. I'll try, and we'll see. So, $41 million release clause would be phenomenal. Uh, we might as well try it, because we have the money, so he's going to be under Crucial, which means he's going to be even more upset when he's not playing full-time. Three years, again, $74,000 in wages, $41.5 million release clause. I'll sign him to it, and uh, we'll see. We'll see if he's down to stay. He probably won't be, and then if we sell him, who cares? That's the good thing right now, is that we have so much money saved up. Same thing with Arne. We'll try to... Uh, actually, we can't. He just negotiated a new contract. So we might still lose Tomas Arne. If we do, so be it. But we'll see if that new contract can settle Dragasevich down a little bit. Uh, and Villalaba needs to get into the team. Sorry, Morgan. But yeah, Villalaba is going to be making his debut... Uh, we're going to bring in Morgan and Kelly. I'd prefer to not have him play, but we really have no choice right now, or at least having him on the bench, we really have no choice. So that'll be the second team. I'm going to have to change up the team sheets after this game, but for the most part, they're still fine. So this is our first of three games against Everton over the next two weeks. They're coming off of a 4-0 victory over Millwall. If anything, though, we might be able to at least, never mind, as we give up a goal three minutes in, we might be able to make the most of this by having it be a home game, but they are running a great squad. Milik, Lanzini, Christian Pulisic, I imagine that's Kieran Tierney, number four there, Hector Bellerin, Jordan Pickford. Uh, we are outmatched, for sure, for Charleston on the bench, and yeah, Onikoru makes it two. We get a goal back in the 90th with Villalaba, so that will help in terms of aggregate score for that second leg but still, that is a rough draw. And we will actually stay live here because we need to uh, sort through our scouting reports here in just a moment. 
So we have a league match against Crystal Palace. The reports are in, and I'm just waiting for the news that we've sold someone who I didn't want us to sell. So we'll see what happens as Ovi Anderson's nearly back. We have our final three reports. Again, we're going to cut the last scouting report from Slovakia short. So let's see what we have here from Slovakia. We have Camille Sermak, who is not going to be signed. Do we have anybody of importance? Yes, we do. Simon Bartos. Uh, not sure, of course, with the, you know, the extras around the name and everything, but Bartos will be signed. We have in Austria, anybody, please? Uh, Johannes Würzburg, sign him up if we can. Let's double check potentials here. So Rebar is going to be on the way out. Jehoda is probably going to fall off too, so we'll get rid of him right now. Rad later. Visser is on the way out. Uh, Leonard also on the way out. So a lot of these guys who were looking really promising falling off a little bit more harshly than I would have thought. So we go back down to Würzburger. We go to Baumgartner, although I don't expect him to stay. And Lorenz Vima will sign him up as well. And that brings us to the Netherlands, which has been quite kind to us. We start off with Daniel Jacobs. That's that's what I think of when I think of a Dutch name. Daniel Jacobs. Thomas de Groot. De Groot. Is there anybody, though, out of even just the players we just signed that are a little bit weaker? Uh, Baumgartner. Sorry, buddy. It was, uh, it was worth signing you for the moment. But, yeah, it's not going to happen. Not that de Groot. The better de Groot. Thank you very much. And that is that. So, uh, there you go. Again, keeping the best talents that we possibly can uh, around as we are good to go. So let's see where we are heading next, again, to try and complete this world tour. So Poland has been scouted, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, Slovenia, Serbia, and Romania all done, if I'm not mistaken. Oh boy, so, man. so we know we're done in South America. We know we're done in South America. We've done everything in North America. Uh, let's take a look. So Austria is done Switzerland is done. France is done. Belgium was one of the early ones, was it not? Indeed it was. Belgium's off the board. The Netherlands. Germany has been scouted twice, so we're good there. Let's take a look. So, I'm pretty sure all of these have already been done. Ireland is done. Northern Ireland is done. Scotland, we know, is done. England, of course, is done. Norway is done. Of course, that's where we uh, found one Ove Anderson. Denmark is done. Sweden was one of the early ones as well. Finland is done, of course, for Timo Altonen. And Russia, we have Russians as well. So I think this world tour is just about done. We just got to double check the African nations and a few of these. This might be the holdup. Uh, Portugal, Portugal, Portugal. Are you on the list? Have we not scouted in Portugal yet? That is, nope, we have. We absolutely have. Okay, well, see, it's worth double-checking. What about in España? Spain is done. Italy is, I think, the one nation we haven't yet. No, nope, Italy too. Jesus. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. And after uh, this little tour of Africa, we should be right back into uh, taking the whole viewer suggestions. Greece has been scouted. Turkey, I'm 99% sure, has been scouted. So we're just, you know, finishing up in Africa here. And then we're good to go. South Africa, I am 99% sure, has been done. Maybe not, though. Africa, yep, South Africa is done. Cameroon is done as well. I need to do a better job of sorting these out for the, uh, for the next world tour. But indeed, Cameroon is off the list. We have Nigeria, which I am uh, certain is off the list. It is Ghana is done. The Ivory Coast. The Ivory Coast. Have we searched there? We have Morocco. I know we have uh, scouted out. Indeed we have. Algeria we've scouted and Egypt we've scouted. So the world tour is done. It is done. So what I'm going to do uh, it's just keep in mind here, we've already scouted in Germany twice, I accidentally scouted Bolivia twice, and Slovakia. So those are the only nations that we will not be returning to. So what I'm going to do 
is just establish us probably in England to start, just the home base, and we'll take it from there. Uh, and I'll, again, leave it up to you guys as far as where we go next. We have been to every location at least once. Uh, and remind me that the only place that we haven't scouted is uh, Ireland. But uh, we are going England, Scotland, and Northern Ireland for this next batch. And then we'll get back into the uh, viewer suggestions. We play Crystal Palace. It'll be the first team in for this game. They are four points clear of us, 10th in the league. We're currently 11th. So this is a pretty big game for us in the grand scheme of things if we want to try to clear, you know, uh, clear some distance, make up some ground, and try to clear a path for us into the top 10. Let's sim the rest of it, and we get the win. It's Medved in the 24th minute. We've gotten a decent amount of goals from our defenders. It's Medved with the goal. Beautiful stuff. And that brings us one point shy of Palace and even on points with Watford. We're going to go at least one more month here before we call it an episode, maybe even a tad bit further. I'll talk to you in a couple of minutes. So it's about time for our second game, the second leg against Everton. Here's the problem. The schedule is yet again absolutely brutal. So again, we lost 2-1 to one in the league. We managed to beat Crystal Palace and, of course, uh, drew Everton again. Not, of course, you wouldn't have known that. Uh, but still, it's the second leg against Everton. We're down 2-1. to one. Then we have an FA Cup matchup against Blackburn where the first team... I feel like has to play today, and then second team plays Blackburn, and then that way the first team's in against Chelsea, because that's a huge matchup. So, for the first time this season, uh, the first team will be playing in a non-league matchup, simply out of necessity, uh, with the exception of Bailey, who will not be in. He had to be for O'Leary, who had a red card. The bright side is, I guess for now, Arne and Dragosevich are both still here, so let's see what happens. Again, we are down by a goal. The problem is one goal is not enough. Of course, they picked up two goals on the road. We need at least a 2 to nothing victory here, ideally, to advance to all, and there is no extra time. So 2 to nothing as Cordoba gets two yellow cards in five minutes and is out, and Christian Pavard scores. At least I imagine that's Pavard. Wright scores. We are in a lot of trouble, though. 3-2 on aggregate, now 4-2 as Milik scores on the pen. Cordoba, you kind of screwed us, buddy. That is it. Everton win both legs, 2-1. to one. We are out of the Carabao Cup. On the bright side, our uh, FA Cup journey will continue, but that is unfortunate to see that journey end that quickly. As Villalaba, by the way, getting a lot of loan offers. We'll see if he ends up leaving the team as quickly as he joined it. But yeah, Everton, a bit too much for us at this point. We've proven that we can get wins. I mean, you look at the Arsenal win out of absolutely nowhere last year en route to winning the FA Cup. So we, we've proven, of course, we can get results against bigger teams, but uh, the Blues were a bit too much for us. Just a bit. So the second team is going to be in for this FA Cup matchup against uh, Blackburn Rovers. And, of course, we have that big game coming up in the league against Chelsea. So they are in relatively good form, beating West Brom and Crawley Town, but they did just get destroyed by Everton. So we might have an opportunity here. Is that Connor Chaplin up front? One of my favorite players to use. And he scores. That's unfortunate. Come on now. As we approach halftime, Galliano scores, who, by the way, is an amazing free kick taker. As I've discovered, Dak restores the lead. For Blackburn, we need a goal here, and Montendon gets it. It's what we needed. Ten minutes left. Will there be a late winner? The answer is no. We'll see Blackburn again. A two-all result. So there you go. Crazy, crazy, and busy times for Tranmere Rovers. Although... You know what, let's get to this game against Chelsea. Still no news, by the way, about anybody forcing themselves away from the team. So we have that going for us. No update on Dragosevic since he signed the new contract. I know the training is available, by the way. I'm going to wait until after this game against Chelsea. And nothing from Tomas Arne, at least as of yet. So 
We will, of course, keep an eye on that situation. We don't get much for that FA Cup performance, but a little bit of money helps, especially, too, when some of those big uh, money deals have to come through. But, of course, if uh, about time a team's like, oh, we want Dragosevich, that's 40 million bucks, we're going to be looking good. As Villalaba has actually been loaned out already. So there you go. He is off to Portimonense, which I think is Portuguese. So Mateo Villalaba, as soon as he is signed, has been loaned out, which is good news for us in a way that he will more than likely be getting regular playing time. I do want to double-check the Youth Academy, not only players for we should get rid of, like Daniel Jacobs, uh, but to see if anybody's worth signing at this point. Uh, Vimmer, let's be honest, he's not going to be worth signing. Is there anybody else? Crazy low overall, maybe a potential, it just doesn't make sense. Doesn't look like it. I think we're okay for now. In terms of somebody being worth, uh, worth signing, though, I mean, outside of Placido Romero... Not really, I mean, unless we factor in a goalkeeper, which we really don't need. So I'm not sure who's going to outright take that spot. I guess it would be Ewan Morgan who is going to outright take that spot. But Ovi Anderson's back, so I'll talk to you in a moment. I'll probably sim through the Chelsea game and just update you on what happens. But yeah, Ovi Anderson's back, which is a huge boost for the team. The fact that we've still been successful somewhat in uh, international tournament play, but also in the league. We're still 10th. We need a big win here, though, or at least a point against Chelsea to stay above Crystal Palace. In what could be the worst-case scenario, we lose to Chelsea 3-0 on the road, and Moritz Meyer has picked up an injury. We do not know how serious it is yet, but this could derail our season. <laughs> Let's see. We get Anderson back. We've lost Moritz Meyer for two months. For two months, we will be without our best player. And that could be, again, absolutely devastating. As Montendon will be the top guy up front now, at the very least a 77. It's not as if Montendon's a pushover, but that does put pressure now on Jonathan Kelly to be the guy for us. And actually, Bailey will end up being on the bench as well. So that's going to be interesting to see how that works out for us. Kelly's actually going to have to be removed off the bench from the first team. So Breen will have uh, a little bit more playing time, a little bit more of an opportunity. But yeah, a couple of devastating injuries this season. So as if we didn't have kind of measured expectations to begin with, uh, we certainly need to keep that in check now. We're still in 10th. We're looking good. Again, only 38 games in the Premier League season. We're 22 in and currently 10th. That's probably better than we could have expected. In terms of getting into a top five spot, I mean, we're 12 points out. That's not going to happen. But we are nine points clear, so three wins difference off of Bournemouth who are in the drop zone. So we're doing okay. And I mean, you look to Arsenal's in 17th. I don't know what's going on there. But there are some bigger clubs than us that are in a lot more trouble. So we're doing okay, all things considered. I'll talk to you guys whenever I have another update. And hopefully it's not as devastating as this one. Blame injuries. Blame a difficult schedule. Regardless, our time as FA Cup champions has indeed come to an end. At the hands of Blackburn Rovers. Not who I would have assumed... But again, uh, in, in most part, we can look to blame injury. And I think you can blame it on the fact, I mean, look at that schedule first and foremost. The schedule ahead as well. I wanted the first team to be ready for Bournemouth. That way the second team is lined up to play Lille over those two legs. It is what it is, unfortunately. Uh, but again, I didn't exactly expect us to repeat as FA Cup champions. I do want to show you some of the top deals, though. I haven't done that a ton not sure if anyone even uh, necessarily cares, but uh, Yori Tielemans to Liverpool, Draxel to Arsenal, so that should really help turn around their season. Uh, Frankie de Jong, Raheem Sterling sold to West Ham, Andrea Bellotti on the move, Patrick Schick, Thomas Barty. So, yeah, a lot of big moves and a lot of big moves involving our direct competition, which is why I don't know how long it's going to take or if it will ever happen that we end up near the top of the Premier League. 
Our first few scouting reports are in the final scouting reports of this episode. We're going to sim this first game against Lille and then more than likely call it. Uh, Reese Wright could be a future guy for us. Ethan Collins, probably not. We'll still sign him up. And Ethan Lewis will also uh, look to be joining. Yeah, Ethan Collins. Sorry, you're gone already. <laughs> funny, funny how that works, sir. Ethan Lewis, though. Welcome aboard, Mr. Morris. Who do you have for us in Scotland? A couple of options. Kirk Murray and Lucas Young. Do we have the players to move off of the club to make room for them? Is the question of 45. Reese Wright is going to be on the way out. And Johannes Wiesberger will be on the way out as well. Don't think that's going to work out for us. So Kirk Murray and Lucas Young... Welcome aboard, and we go to Northern Ireland with Mr. Barr. Who do you have for us? You have Keith Hennessy. We'll look to sign him up again. Got to double check for any stupidly low ratings or anything like that. And the decision just got a little bit tough because Lucas Young is looking pretty damn good. There's quite a few guys that are looking pretty damn good in terms of those potentials. I think, though, if we were to look at the goalkeeping situation again, again, we have Mayer, or perhaps it's Meyer, who's a 17 and a 64. Winkler is 16 and a 56, but with a really good potential. And then there's probably the best of the bunch with Lakatus. So I think Constantine Winkler, that potential's great, but he's just not going to have the time here to develop, and we're not hurting at all for goalkeeping help so that'll be how we figure or sort that out so let's go ahead and take a look the round of 32 we play Leal so the second team will be in first team will play Sunday against Newcastle uh, the second team actually this is the first team at the moment the thing we need to check indeed Jay Morgan is back so that is going to cause a little bit of conflict where it's now going to be it's now going to be Morgan back up top. Of course, Altonen is still out. And for the second team, I'm honestly not sure. I think it's going to be Arne who ends up back on the bench full time because it's going to be Berezovsky and Clark for the second team. So like I said, I still like the solid amount of rotation that we have between the two teams. Uh, again, Berezovsky will get the bump up. Clark is slightly better defensively, and then Bailey will take a seat for Arne. So that is how the team is shaping up with Morgan returning from injury. So that's pretty solid. You see Roberts as well up to an 80. So both teams still looking very well-rounded. We made it through that deadline without Arne or Dragosevich leaving the team, which is why I was saying don't view it as too much of a threat. Let's see what happens against the Lille. It's the home leg. How tough or how strong of a team are they going to bring out? How tough of a game is this going to be for a slightly underpowered second team? Pepe scores. They missed a pen a minute later, and Sanchez ties it. We could have been down 2 nothing early. Clark picks up an injury in the midfield, so we get one guy back and are probably going to lose someone else. Pepe gets his second goal. Of the game, we're down 2-1. Two, to one. two away goals, they make it three. And I think, I think we've hit our limit in the Europa League. It was an accomplishment to get out of the group stage, but we are down 3-1 to one on aggregate. Three road goals for them, meaning we are in a whole lot of trouble. Again, even if we win that second leg 2 to nothing, they go through on the road goals. So I'm going to leave it up to you. We've had a lot of conversation as to whether or not I should play games. Do we play that second leg against Lille to try and save ourselves in the Europa League? Um, I'll leave that up to you. I mean, really, in terms of importance, I'm not sure how much of it there is, aside from, like, okay, if we were to somehow go on to win, you know, Champions League and everything. So let me know what you think. Do we play that second game against Lille? Unfortunately, actually, fortunately, Clark's only out for a couple of days. He's out for a week, so that is fairly beneficial. But we end this episode. We are out of the Carabao Cup. We are actually, no, we're out of the FA Cup. I think we're out of the Carabao Cup now, too, aren't we? Everton was the Carabao Cup. 
So right now we are, uh, yeah, we're out of the Carabao Cup. We're out of the FA Cup. It's just the league and the Europa League. If we can either pull off a miracle comeback or physically lead ourselves, hopefully, to a comeback, there is no guarantee, especially with that being the second team. So the focus from here on out with 14 games to go in the league is the fact that we want to stay above the drop zone. And right now we are tied with Palace, but we have a better goal differential even though it's a minus one, uh, we are currently 10th in the league, which is pretty damn promising. I think top 10 in the 9 or 10 spot is really what we can hope for this year. We are currently a ways away from Bournemouth in the drop zone. So I think we're going to hit our goal for this season. What could have been had injuries not occurred, time will tell. But we are looking pretty damn good right now i gotta admit so let me know what you think as far as playing that second europa league matchup and let me know as well the list is starting over as far as where we are scouting where we are scouting next let me know i hope you guys enjoyed this episode thank you for supporting the series you know the deal the like buttons the subscribing the bells and all the fun stuff check out everything in the description and i will see you guys next time until then have a good one